Okay, hello again. This is Victor Momo, and this is the second part of the video on unique and filter functions. Of course, you know it's by no means an exhaustive, uh, you know, video, so to say, covering all the examples that are possible. But just to give you some ideas um, of what can be done in this video, I want to focus a little more on the spill operator, as some people now call it, which is the hash key. Bill Jelen referred to it in his book unofficially as the array reference notation, but it's the spill operator. I think that's what most people call it now. So what exactly is this? I'll break it down, make it very simple. And, um, you know, where does it come in handy? What I said in the last video was I wanted to, you know, push this a little further and use the unique list in a data validation. So how do I do that? So let's remind ourselves of what we did here. This was just a case of you know, getting a unique list of uh, subscribers, right? As in, who donated more than $120. So it's simple. You are just filtering on your subscriber list. The condition here, which is F3 to F50, is this, that the donation is greater than what? 120 right? The unique function there is just to make sure you don't have duplicates. That's really what it is. And you get, you know, this list. You know that this is dynamic in the sense that if I change this to 100, I might have more entries, right? If I change it to 50, maybe much more entries and so on. So it's difficult to reference, you know, a fixed range in this. You can't say, oh, because I started with 120 and I had, you know, uh, six names and I select these six names. If this changes, the range spills, the range size changes, meaning that the range is dynamic. Prior to now, we would have had to use, you know, like the index function to create, you know, a dynamic range or the offset function as some, you know, may want to uh, to, to use. I mean, the whole story of uh, volatility comes in, but that's a different matter entirely. So, but now with Office 365, it's kind of, you know, if I may say, it's really easier. So let's get to the meat of it. If I reference these cells, let's assume I just did something like count. I wanted to count A and I selected these cells here. Oh, come on. What happened there? Sometimes when you type too fast. Now, do you see what happened? I selected from H5. I did Control Shift down. And what did it put in there for me? It put a hash key there, right? So count A, H5, hash. It tells me there are five. So what does the hash key mean here? The hash key is just simply saying that H5 in itself is not a single cell array, meaning that it's a multi-cell array. So H5 hash means H5 and every other cell in that array with H5, right? So even if this changed to 100, you see that this formula is still correct. But if you had the specific cells H5 to H9 hard coded in there, then it wouldn't adjust itself as you change to $100. So that hash key is the secret to using a res the result from a range that spills. Once you have the hash key, even if the result spills to 100 rows, this guy would adjust itself accordingly. Let's change this to 50. Okay. All right. So you see 12 and it goes on. So if you want to use it in a data validation, that's the secret to it. Just using the hash key. But here's the problem. The first time I you know, got to use the um, dynamic arrays, what I felt was, okay, if this function here gives me my unique list, then I should be able to feed this function into my data validation, just like I would have fed my index there to create a dynamic range. But then you find out that it doesn't work. So let's assume I want to put it in this cell. I do Alt DL. That should take me to the data validation tab L to list. And here I put in this, right? Because I know this gives me my unique list. This would be easy to use. I just do OK. It says, oh, the current formula evaluates to an error. I'm like, okay, how do I fix it? So, you see, at the end of the day, nothing happens. So, let's go back. Right? So, what you just do in this case is just to point to the first cell where the result spills from and put a hash key. What's the first cell it spills from? It's H5. And what? You just need what? The hash. And you do okay. 
and now you have that list right you see it all the way from the undertaker all the way to andrade i change this to 100 okay now you should stop at big show let's see that okay so you see so the secret here is just using the hash key so the hash key just accounts for every other cell that's a result of you know the formula spilling from the first cell to other cells and you have that in so this could then be used you know maybe further on if this data is supposed to feed you know a chart or you know something else then you can just take it a notch further but i just wanted to show this in this video that the hash key is really a very powerful <laughs> notator now or notation in this case in um, office 365 so some people call it the spill operator and yeah that's one way you can use it i'm gonna show another case you know using it with um with charts in another video so one other thing here that i should add is that it also works with um you know range names right so uh named ranges so if, for example, this cell, Great Kali, I renamed it just a quick way. I just renamed it to, you know, maybe my output. Okay. Right. So that cell is now called my output. I could come here and put a data validation in there. I do tab L list and I would say, um, what's it called? My output. But rather than just say my output, I will say my output with the hash. So that it knows that from my output, whatever that cell is, and you know any other cell that is a result of the spill, pick all of them up and do okay, and then you see that what that still works. Okay, so just something for you to know. If you like this video, hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel, and as I always say, if you can think it, Excel can do it. I'm out.